Hi everyone, welcome back. This is part five and the final video for the case lot series. I'm so excited to bring the series to a close and finally be able to go over what my thoughts and feelings about the whole experience has been and really just kind of close this chapter. It's been a very long one. So last week we ended off with a potential profit of $2,380. So let's go ahead and get started on this last video to see what our final potential profit is for this $888 haul. Next looks like Nike leggings. These are tiny. Um, this color is really pretty. And the Nike check mark is like a tonal so these look like in really great condition. They are an extra, extra small, which they look it. But this color is really pretty and they'll probably go for about $15, $20. I do find that more of the, the unique kind of colors and patterns for Nike do better than just their basic black. Next is another Nike piece. This looks like kind of an older style, kind of cropped a capri. This one I might just try to take to the buy sell trade just because it is a little bit of an older style. If not, I might try to sell it, but I'll only get about $10 for it. All right, next is another itty bitty piece. It's definitely a kid that says a medium. This is, this is not a medium. Um, so maybe I'll just lot some of these kids clothes together, which none of this was supposed to be kids clothes. But these are shorts, and I will more than likely, like I said, lot them with the other pair of kids' Nike clothes. Otherwise, these would probably only sell for about 5 or $10. This is a basic Nike tank, which do you know what I'm going to do with this? I'm going to lot it up with the other Nike tanks. This is a jersey. It's Brady from when he was at the Patriots. It looks like a women's to me. Well, I don't see it's an on field. I don't see it say women's anywhere or youth. So I have to figure that out, but it's a large. So it's definitely either a women's or a youth. And I will for sure list this myself. Um, I have no idea what it would go for. I would say $30 just off the top of my head. Um, if it's youth, it may be a little bit less than that. So we'll say 25, 30. So another Nike tank, which will get, I will say lotted together, but I might keep this one. I like the color a lot. Next up is Nike. Uh, Nike's women's. It's like a fourth, fourth zip long sleeve. Um, this one does have a bit of wear if you look at the um, reflective or some cracking. So if this had been a little bit more pristine, I would probably would sell it myself or sell it by itself. What does it say Nike Element? Uh, but more than likely, this will get lauded together with the other ones just because it is a, has a little bit more wear than than what I like to see. Next is another pair of bike shorts. These are Nike, extra small. Just a great basic little staple. These will probably go for about fifteen dollars. And I know it looks like we're done, but we're not. So I'm gonna dump the rest of the clothes that are on the bottom on top of the table. Okay, this is officially everything. So let's dive in. Um, this is a men's, yeah, it's golf. A men's golf polo, uh, $15. This is another pair of women's biker shorts, like we just went through. Are these the same size? Small, extra small. Hmm. I may still try to lot these together because the sizing isn't too off. Um, if not, again, they'll probably go for about $15 a piece. Right, next is a Nike full zip. Looks like a cheerleading jacket. Uh, more. I mean, I'm sure there's a ton of people with the last name Moore, so I feel like it could still sell. Just, it needs someone with the last name Moore. Is any of your guys' last name Moore? Or maybe a friend's last name Moore? Great gift. 
Um, I might try to sell it just because it's, again, it's not that uncommon of a last name. Aww. And it'll probably only go for about $15. Trip, it says trip on the hardware. I don't know what it is, a jumpsuit? A jacket, a jacket. A massive jacket. Okay. So the brand is Trip and it has the lo logo all over the hardware, which is a really good sign. So the brand is Trip Dang Good, oh wait, Dang Good Man. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, I've never heard of this before, but I'm definitely gonna look it up. Again, anytime I see like the hardware have the branding, like every single piece, that is always a really good sign because cheaper brands aren't gonna go into the time and effort and money to produce those pieces. So it looks like the brand is most, mostly women's, at least on Poshmark, and prices are all over the place. Like there's some for 150 and there's some for 35. So just to be safe for now, I'll say for this piece, based off what I'm seeing for comps for a little bit, like more basic pieces, I would say about $40 just to be safe, but I very well could have something that's worth $100. I just have to do a little bit more research. All right, next is an Under Armour little jersey. Claws. Is that someone? Is that a team? I don't know what that is. Claws. Um, it looks like a Christmas tea. More than likely this will go to a buy sell trade. I guess I will do kind of a search later to see if there's some kind of team that has a player named Claws at number 25, but there's no logo on here, so I'm assuming not. Next up looks and like looks like another Under Armour uh, Badgers. I don't know what that is football maybe soccer. I don't know. Um, really like this is just gonna go to a buy sell trade just because it's Under Armour and there is quite a lot of wear. So apparently this is the Wisconsin Badgers and it's where Russell Wilson <laughs> went to school from. Uh, I had no idea. I will probably still just take this to the buy sell trade just because there's a lot of cracking in the logos. But I don't know, I guess after learning that information, I might give it a quick look up. So these are Nike leggings. They look like a little bit of an older style. And the side stripe here, and they're the more the cotton material, which is why I say an older style. Uh, they're not too washed out though, but I'll try to take these to a buy sell trade. If not because they're leggings, I can take pictures and list them pretty quickly, but we'll only get probably about 10 or $15 for them. These are definitely Adidas. I just, I don't know if this is supposed to be pink or it got washed with, okay, it's supposed to be pink. It kind of looks like when you wash whites with red, like it's that color pink. But if you look at the embroidered, I'm pretty sure this is just how it's supposed to look. Um, this again looks like more of an older style, older material um, that I will probably take to a buy sell trade. The little um, Climalite logo is pretty worn off here. So this would have been a nice little basic Adidas sweater, but there is some staining here that looks pretty worn into it. I'm not sure I can get it out. I will try. If I can't get it out, I'll try to take it to the buy sell trade. If by some miracle I can get it out, I will list this and I'll probably get about $25 for it. Ooh, flax. So this is women's kind of um, oversized shorts. The brand is Flax. Um, I love selling flax. It sells really fast. Uh, not for too much. These probably only go for about $25, $30, but they sell really fast. and. Flax is it's called a lag and look style. So a lot of their pieces or the lag and look style is made out of linen and it's very lightweight materials. It's it's really baggy. And that's just definitely a good keyword to look up or to have if you find flax or there's another brand called Bryn Walker that I love finding that it's also a lag and look brand. Right. 
and we have more Nike. Is this supposed to be like that? I can't tell if this is supposed to look like it has wrinkles or just has some really deep set wrinkles. Um, the logo looks good. It looks like it's pretty intact. There's no cracking. Um, it is a 2X, which is great. Um, this one I might just sell on its, on its own. Uh, probably only about $15, but it's in great condition. Next is Karl Lagerfeld, which first, first sound sounds substantial, but unfortunately it is sold at TJ Maxx. Um, this is uh, very Chanel-esque though, so that is a plus. That's just a little piece. So this may go for a little bit more money than what the other pieces, because I have some that are just basic sweaters. I think I sold for about $20, $25. Uh, this one, I'll say about $30. I'm hoping a little bit more just because again, um, it does look very Chanel-esque. So that's always a positive, especially if it's Karl Lagerfeld. Right. Next, you would think are a pair of Nikes or something, but they're not. They are, Diane von Furstenberg, which is weird. It's just a basic pair of black kind of dress leggings, if you will. Um, I've never even come across pants like this from her. More than likely, they won't go for more than $15, $20, if I had to guess. Just because, like I mentioned in the last video, her stuff only tends to do really well if it is the wrap dresses, which is what she's most known for. This feels like wool. And it's new a tag. So this is Cynthia Steff, but it's Cynthia by Cynthia Steff, which is a diffusion line. Um, if you've been following me for a bit, you know I don't like diffusion lines, or I don't like designers that sell diffusion lines because it just kind of messes up the search. But I've never come across I didn't even know Steph uh, or Cynthia Steph made diffusion lines. Well, let me see, are these wool? So they're 69% wool. And they are new with tag. So I would say they'd probably still go for about $40. Um, her dresses with her main line can do pretty well at about $60 plus, depending on the style. And they're usually in um, a silk fabric but I've never found her pants before. Next is an Adidas sweater, and it's new with tags. Nice. Wait, I'm confused. This is the back. That's, okay, this is the back. Let's flip her around. This is the front. I believe, yep, this is women's. Um, this is a nice little, little sweater. It has a little pocket zip here. Nice, I think this would probably go for about $30. There isn't any kind of retail, suggested retail, but uh, this is a really nice little Adidas sweater. Billabong, this does not look like Billabong. I think this is a Billabong flannel. This would probably only go for about $15, but it is a size small, and more than likely, I would just be taking this to a buy-sell trade. But if they don't take it, it might be something that I, that I do list up. It's interesting. Next, this is Marmot. So Marmot used to do really well. Um, it re retails for a lot. I can't tell if this is men's or women's. Medium. I think this is a men's. I need to do a little bit more research. Uh, but Marmot still can do pretty well. It does go decently fast. It just doesn't sell for as much as it used to, at least for me. I'll probably only get about $30 for this, where in the past I would have at least got $50. Let's see another new tag. So I think this is identical to the shirt we got in last week, or not last week, in the part one video. This is the Adidas Terex, which is their outdoor, I guess, label or brand. Um, so I'm hoping they are the same size because I'll just lot these together. So that's great. These are Under Armour men's track pants. Um, what is that? 
looks like some rubbing here where it's shiny. There's a pool. So these will go to a buy, sell, trade. And if they do not want them, they will be getting donated. Right, more Under Armour, men's Under Armour pants. These look to be in a little bit better condition. So they are just basic with the little embroider right there, which again, I prefer the embroidery than the imprint because it doesn't get all the cracking. So these look like they're in pretty good condition. I probably will go ahead and list them. They're just a great basic staple piece and I'll probably only get about 15 for them. Okay, we're in the home stretch. Ooh, so this is fun. This is just a crew neck sweater. Looks like a women's. Um, this label is interesting. It kind of it looks a little, a little vintage. I'm not sure, but just judging off the style. Um, so this is interesting, just because the label and then also this um, you got embroidery. Um, it does have kind of a washed look, which again, if this is vintage and that's perfectly okay, I would definitely list this myself. Um, and it being vintage or not is gonna do, you know, it's gonna change the price a lot, but if I have to just kind of guess off the top of my head, this will go for about 25 to 30. Columbia. Let's see, I think this is a women's. Fit looks like a women's. So this is Columbia. Oh, it has this huge river here. <laughs> Darn. So that is unfortunate. I mean, Columbia doesn't do great anyways. Honestly, I might just like stitch this up myself because they did a terrible job and keep this because it's a, a uh, there's like wear inside too. I don't know. I might just keep it as just kind of a basic jacket to throw over because I'd hate to just throw it away. Oh. Um, but definitely won't be reselling this. Right, next is another new tag item. This is a very pretty purple shirt made with Parley ocean plastic. I don't know what that means. I mean, I know what ocean plastic is. I just don't know what Parley means. Um, so no suggested retail, but it is new with tag and it's really pretty purple. I just can't really tell if it's kids or not it does look tiny, but it is a size small. Either way, I would definitely sell this myself. It'll probably go for about $20, $25, depending on if it's kids or women's. Oh, I think this is like a, for bicycles, right? These little pockets in the back. So that might actually increase the value. It might be closer to $30, hopefully. This looks like Adidas. It's just a basic tee. Um, it looks in really great condition. It's not new with tag, but I mean, even if you just look at the label here, there's no cracking or anything. Looks in almost new condition, so this will get, you know, lotted up with the other Adidas shirts. So these are Adidas pants. They look like the golf pants style. Maybe a Priya crop. I think these are women's. Yeah, they're size four. Um, I don't see it say golf anywhere, but these just look like golf pants, but I'll do a little more research. Similar to Nike, if you look behind the label, there are, is a, size, or a style number that you can look it up. They're not quite as good as Nike, um, as far as it always having kind of a stock picture or something to reference, but either way, I'll definitely look these up. And if these are the golf pants, uh, looks like women's, I'll probably go for about 20 bucks. Under Armour. So this is an Under Armour polo. Men's. Um, I don't know what that says. Nokian Tyras. What does that mean? Nokian Now I have to look it up because I want to know what that means. It doesn't sound like a school. Oh, it is a uh, North American tire manufacturer. So it's worse than a school. This will just get donated. Um, I mean, I guess like any of this, I will try at the buy, sell, trade first. Um, I'm hoping that they take some of it. 
but uh, otherwise this will just get donated. I don't think anyone wants an Under Armour shirt with a tire logo on it. If you do, let me know though. All right, this is just a basic Adidas tank that will go with a lot. So it's another Adidas tee. Yep, another basic tee that will get lighted up. So this is T. Alexander Wang. <clears throat> so I've never actually sold the T. Like if you look here, I mean, I keep calling it the T. It's Alexander Wang, but it is the T. I don't know if it's the diffusion line. Um, if you see, it has kind of some tonal striping here throughout the dress. Um, I believe I have looked it up before and it, it's not gonna go for like what Alexander Wang would go for by itself. But I'd say probably about $40. Um, the style is just very classic. Um, should still do pretty decently. It looks kind of like a beach cover up. Next is Mother. I've never seen this label before though. So I love finding Mother jeans. They can go for really good money, like 60 plus. Um, but I've never seen this label before. Usually it's just a black one that says Mother. I'm assuming this is the same brand. Have you guys ever seen this before? Hmm. I have to do some, some research. So this is the paper bag style. They are super tiny, um, but it's the kind of paper, paper boy style pants. Uh, not paper boy, paper bag style pants with the cinching up here. Usually these have a belt that come with it. Um, I'm not sure if this is supposed to, but it's definitely still the same brand. Vila Kiria still has the mother label. And then, of course, if you look on the pockets, it has the infamous M, which you can always tell. If you're just scanning through jeans at Goodwill or any thrift store, if you have easy access to see the pants uh, back pocket, and just, just look for that M. So I don't really know what these are gonna go for, again, because mother is going to vary dramatically depending on the style, but I really like this, this patch, even though it's on the inside, it's unique. So I'm just gonna say at about $50 just to be safe. But fingers crossed it's more. Right, these look like just a basic pair of these men's. Huh. So these are Adidas, but they're like almost sheer. They just don't feel great. They kind of feel like your gym shorts from school or something. Uh, these will just go to a buy-sell trade. Right, another Adidas. These look like men's. Let's see. They're size me and they might be women's. I'm not sure. I would say they're women's just based off of that silver logo. Um, and the inseam looks a bit shorter. I always, I'll sell these. They'll probably only go for about 10 or $15 though. But pants are pretty easy to take pictures of and get listed. All right, what are you? Oh, Carhartt. So this is just a basic Carhartt um, long sleeve shirt. Uh, it's a 2XL, it's a great color. Carhartt, it, their basic tees don't go for too much, but it, it's a very in brand right now, so it will go pretty fast for probably about $20. I like the color a lot, the logo color. These so are just a pair of Adidas shorts. Uh, there is no liner in these. These are very lightweight. Um, they have a little bit of marking there. I can't tell if it's going to come out. If it comes out, I will sell them probably about $10 or $15. If not, they will go to a buy sell trade. This looks like Nike. Yep. So this is a Nike Pro um, half zip. And the pattern is very loud, so it may be worth more than, you know, just your basic. But if you look in the back, it has Nike Pro here, just like the leggings. Um, generally, I would say this would be about $20, $25. However, I will look up to see if this is more of a special print or pattern, because sometimes that can increase the value a bit. Only a couple pieces left now. So this is Under Armour. Just a very basic tee. Um, this 
I'll probably just take to a buy sell trade. Looks like there is some some holes here. So yeah, buy sell trade or just donating. Aww. Unfortunately. All right, here's another pair of Adidas pants. These look like women's. Nope, they're a youth. So these are kids. Um, I've never sold the kids ones before. These look like they're in really good condition though. So I will go ahead and give them a try. If I had to guess, they're only gonna go for about $15 though. These look like another pair. These look a little, aw. Why do the special items have holes on them? Well, I was kind of excited about these because if you look at the stripes, they have a pattern. They're not just your basic white stripes. But unfortunately, there is this massive hole. So unfortunately, these will just get donated. Aww. It's a bummer. This looks like another golf tee. Yep, this is a woman's golf tee. Um, again, I love selling uh, Adidas and Nike golf items. Usually men sell a little bit faster, but I'm not gonna turn down a women's. This will probably only go for about 15 to $20 though. Right, it looks like one more item left. What is it? It's a pretty skirt. It is Saks Fifth Avenue. So I don't think I've ever even sold anything from Saks Fifth Avenue. But this style is really cute. Let me see. Is the material maybe something special? Let's see. Nope, it's just rayon and nylon. So I'm actually gonna look this up really quick just because, funny enough, I think I have looked up Saks Fifth Avenue items in the past and they didn't do well just as a brand overall, but I do like this style, so I am gonna look it up really quick. Plus it's the last time. Just a quick look up. It looks like I am right and they don't go for very much, like $15. Um, I can't find this specific one. I will do a little bit more research off camera. Um, more than likely though, this will just go to a buy sell trade. All right, that is the entire haul. That is every item that I got in the haul. It was supposed to be 200 items. I believe it was actually 207 items but I could be miscalculating when there's that many units. So we ended with a total potential profit of $3,121, which will be fantastic if it comes to fruition. Again, we never know. Uh, I'm not going to be sitting on some of these items for a very long time. Uh, if they don't sell, I will like to kind of process them out but that is why I call it the potential profit. So before I go over my, I guess, thoughts and rates and reviews of this whole um, case lot series, I did want to go over some of the numbers. So there's a couple different things that I did with each of these items. Either I decided to list them, um, I decided to take them to a buy sell trade, or I decided to donate them. So I have a total item count of 207. Um, it was only supposed to be 200. Now that could be inaccurate. I could have accidentally wrote down um, an item wrong or logged an item wrong or a duplicate. So I'll figure that out as I finish listing everything. Everything is not listed yet. Um, as of right now, I've actually only even listed 47 items. And of those 47 items listed, 18 of them have sold. And they have sold for a total payout of $362.69. And so what I mean by payout is that's after um, eBay or Poshmark has taken their fees and shipping has taken is taken out because I wanna see what the total is next to that $880 cost of goods that I spent. So as of right now, I am at $362.69 towards that $888 goal, which is great to be there at only selling 18 items. Now of those 18 items, eight of the items were actually taken by the buy sell trade, which is kind of unfortunate. They only took eight of the items that I have taken and I did get $54. So uh, $54 of that $362 is from the buy sell trade. 
And $54 is not bad at all getting that for eight items. It just is kind of a bummer that they only took eight items out of all the items that I gave them. I have listed, currently listed 29 items. 18 items have sold. As of right now, I have taken 40 items to donations and that is the items that the buy sell trade didn't take or ones that I was like 99% sure they weren't going to take at all anyways. I do plan to take some more to the buy sell trade. I just haven't really gathered that second grouping up yet. I am noticing a little bit more flaws as I'm going through items that I had planned to list. So some of those are going to be taken to the buy sell trade or at least that's what I can foresee. So just to recap where we're at right now, I have currently listed 29 items. I have sold 18 and I have donated 40. And so that leaves me with the total left to list is still 120, which is crazy. I feel like I've been shuffling through these for months already. Obviously I'm still bringing in other items to source that I'm more excited about. So those do tend to take priority over some of these items that are not very excited or these items that I'm not very excited to list. But all in all, as far as the number standpoint, to be already at $362 for 18 items is is fantastic. It's a, it's a great return. So it's definitely a viable business. It's just, is it the right business for me or you? Uh, and kind of what are my thoughts on that? So let's go ahead and jump into my kind of feelings and review of this whole entire experience. All right, so I'm going to try to keep my overall feelings on the whole case lot buying and reselling experience separate from the videoing, like video editing experience. Um, because I do feel like <laughs> editing the video has been super cumbersome. I didn't foresee it being five videos. I thought really two originally. Um, so I definitely would have recorded it different and done different things that way um, to make that more efficient and exciting and things like that. Uh, so I'm going to try to keep my thoughts and feelings separate from this whole video creation YouTube aspect and solely on um, the items that I got and what I've been doing to process them and how this experience has been that way. So as you've seen, most of these items are very low dollar amounts. For me, this does not work out. Um, if I was full time, maybe, but I am very limited in time that I can put towards processing inventory. So when it's a lower dollar amount, it's much harder to justify, you know, picking it up and selling it. And that's what a lot of these items have been is very low dollar amounts. Um, I would say, like I, I think I've mentioned in the videos, uh, Nike has been doing well. Most of the items that have sold have been the Nike pieces, but all of these aren't Nike. So I don't know if all of these are gonna sell and if they're gonna sell very fast. The amount of Under Armour, <laughs> I'm sure you could tell in the video was just overwhelming and it's not a brand that I ever pick up. Um, maybe if it's a jacket or something, you know, as I say, more substantial, I would pick up or look at. But in general, I do not pick up Under Armour. It's just not kind of a part of my business. So to me, it has been just a lot of work for a lower amount of money. Uh, I would much rather pick up a higher dollar amount uh, or a higher ASP item that maybe it will sit a little bit longer, but I know it's going to sell and it's going to make a lot more money for that time that I'm spending. Because to me, if I'm spending, you know, f you know, a total of five minutes processing pictures, listing an item, it doesn't matter if that item is going to sell for $200 or $10, I'm going to be putting the same time and effort into um, processing. So for me and my business, I prefer to focus more on those higher price points. The other big aspect and probably the biggest aspect for me and these boxes and if I would ever do it again is it's around the whole sourcing. So um, I love sourcing. It's my favorite part of this job is, you know, the treasure hunt and finding items. Um, yeah, it's just the treasure hunt. That's what a lot of us like. And because that's what I enjoy the most out of my business, I don't want to take that aspect away from it. Uh, it's important to me. So I wouldn't want to do these kind of case lots all the time where I'm getting sent items that um, 
I didn't handpick out, like I didn't find them and most of them are not even very exciting uh, to find in the box. Uh, it just doesn't work for me in that way. So that being said, I think that these boxes would work really well for um, your business if you are someone who does a high quantity and a low ASP or a high turn this kind of box could work for you. I still think you need to be careful though, because even if you are someone who sells a lot of items at a lower price point, some of these items may not be high turn rates. So if you are interested in doing boxes or even pallets in the future, I would definitely look for ones that provide either um, brand boxes where they're, you know, they're it's all Nike or it's all a specific brand or a manifested sheet. That way you can see what you're getting because even though it's lower price point, some of these items may not sell at all or they could sit for a long time. And that's the last thing I think any business, whether you're a high ASP, low turn or low ASP, high turn or in between like me, where you don't, you, we don't want stuff sitting period. So even more so if it's going to be a low dollar amount, if it's a low dollar amount, it needs to be in and out very fast. And some of these items I don't foresee being that way. And it would also work for you if you don't really care to source. That's not, um, I guess your joy of this, um, business. I have seen a lot of resellers out there who have people who source for them. And that's just not anything that I can foresee myself being interested in because that's what I enjoy the most from this. So if you are someone who you don't really care to do the sourcing, you're fine with just getting sent the, the items, or you may live in a place where your sourcing is very limited. Um, between that and if you are someone who um, is more of a, a lower ASP and a higher turn, these boxes could definitely work for you. So would I do this again? Um, all in all, no. <laughs> um, I wouldn't mind doing like the purse box again or the um, premium women's apparel again. Uh, those two boxes were pretty decent and I got a good amount out of them. I think the women's premium box I already sold um, at, at, like the that trip jacket and I'm not sure if I've sold anything else, but that was great out of there. And then there's a lot of potential with the purses, which I don't think I've listed any of them yet. So those two boxes I would possibly try again. Other than that, I don't think I would be interested in doing it again. And even though those boxes were good, on top of that, these boxes didn't bring me joy. I love going and finding items to sell. The, the treasure hunt is why I started doing this is because it's something that I enjoy. And so taking that away is makes this way more of a regular job. So I don't think that I will be, you know, doing this kind of thing at all if I do or if I did it would only be for like a short amount of time to maybe test something out or if I'm trying to really grow my inventory in a short amount of time but long term or consistently I do not see this being a part of my business. So that wraps up this case lot series. I hope it has been super helpful and informative for you guys. Um, thank you for watching as always and let me know in the comments below what do you think if you've been following um, this journey? What do you think about the, you know, the cases? Have you ever bought cases or pallets before? Do they work for your business? I would love to hear kind of your guys' thoughts of how it works for your business and why it works for your business or why it hasn't worked for your business either. Um, I'd love to have that kind of conversation in the comments below. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Happy to wrap this up and I will see you guys next time.